Hi everybody, I'm Kathy, and I'm gonna show you today how to make my favorite mask. This has been my go-to pattern and my go-to mask since all this stuff started. Let me show you. It's made out of knit, it's cool and comfortable, and it's stretchy, and we're gonna make it all on the Baby Lock 8 Thread Serger. Let me tell you what else it is. It's easy on and off. I'm constantly having to take my mask on and off, on and off, all day long. Look at this, one-handed, woohoo! That's another reason I love it. All right, let's go to the Baby Lock Serger and let me show you how I do this. All right, what you're gonna need is some lightweight, stretchy knit. This is uh, uh, like a t-shirt weight knit that stretches both ways. Now you can use other kinds of knit, you just have to pay attention to how it stretches, but this one stretches both ways, it's very lightweight. And the printed pattern is attached here, and it will show you that you need to cut one strip, almost two inches, one and seven eighths inches wide by width of fabric. Like this. Now knits usually, 58 inches wide, so that's how long this strip is gonna be. You only need one strip per mask, and then you need to cut two pieces of the body of the mask. And again, the pattern, the two, um, template is attached with the pattern, okay? Now, what we're gonna do as soon as we get this cut, and oh, by the way, tip, cut more than one. Cut four or five out of a half yard of fabric because they're much easier to assemble. Assembly line, you do all your three thread serging, then you do all your eight thread serging. That's just a tip. All right, let's look at the body of the mask and see how I've marked this. I'm gonna mark the middle of the curved side, and then I'm gonna mark halfway between the middle and the end. So that would be one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. It's cut in, it's marked in fourths. Here and here, here, and here. Middle, halfway between the middle and the end, halfway between the middle and the end. So it's marked in fourths. All right, so I've got the machine set up for a three thread narrow serge. That's in the instructions. The settings are in the instructions. My knife is engaged. My um, stitch length is set at um, two and a half, but you could go to three and a half stitch width is set at M, and the knife is up. Now you're really not gonna cut much off of your mask body or any part of this, but I set the knife up just sort of as a thread guide, as a fabric guide. It's, it helps to run your fabric along that. You'll notice now I have attached the clear foot. The clear foot's gonna serve us really well here because it's gonna allow me to see those marks as they move up under the foot. And what I'm gonna do is begin to serge the edge with a three thread serge, three thread narrow. And when I get to this first mark, I'm gonna stop. So slowly, all right, watch it come up to the needle and you can see it. Boom, I'm stopped. Now I'm gonna come over here and set my differential feed up to gather, all the way up to two and then I'm gonna continue on. Now, while I'm doing the gathering, I'm gonna be careful not to tug or pull on my fabric. I may adjust it a little bit, but if you tug it, it's gonna pull the gathers out. So I'm just gonna gently let it. Situate it again. Now I'm looking for that other black mark. Let's see where it is. So I'm gonna stop when I get to that other, that next last black mark, right about there. Then I'm gonna come over here and put my differential feed back down to in and continue to three thread surge off the end of the mask. Okay. All right, now let's do the other side the same way. And you see the reason I'm doing this, you can see those little gathers 
for your nose and your chin. It makes the mask fit so much better. Okay, here we go. We're set on differential in, coming up to the first mark. Stop. My needle down, and I'm gonna flip it up to number two, gather. And we're gonna come around this curve, not tugging on it. And see, there's the mark that I'm gonna stop on this time. Boom, now I'm gonna change it back to him. So you see, I have a nice little gather there and a nice little gather there, and that's gonna give me some gathering under my chin and on my nose. Now, one of the things I forgot to say is that you want to set the pressure of this presser foot at maximum. Do you see this dial right here? Turn it to the maximum pressure so that your foot is pressing down on the fabric that gives you a better gather, I found. Okay, so. The other piece, we're gonna do the same exact way. We're gonna straight stitch right up to the first mark with differential feet on end. Then I'm gonna put it on gather number two. adjust it just a little bit to get it over. And stop at the next mark, put it back to end, and finish on along that side. Okay, see that nice little gather right there? Right in the middle, right where you want it. And I'm going to do the last side the same way. So we've got all Four curved edge, edges done the same way. Different in, up to the mark, stop, set it up to two. And when I come to the last black mark, I put it back down to end, and surge right off. All right, now we have two mask pieces with nice little gathers in the center, and we're going to place those right sides together. There's no up or down, so you don't have to worry about that, but there is a front and back, so you want the wrong sides together, right sides facing out. And then I'm going to clip them with my Wonder Clips. Okay, so I have my two pieces of mask body, wrong sides together, and Wonder Clips along the curved edge here and the curved edge here, attaching them together, ready for me to attach the binding. Now, when I say attach the binding, what I mean is this is all going to get sewn on to the mask body. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with the 15 millimeter knit woven bias binder. First thing you wanna do is set your machine up for a wide cover stitch. That means you have to attach this table, take the other table off, use your manual and your recipe card to show you all the steps and all the settings for a wide cover stitch. That's what you want to set up. So I've got my needles here in the one and three position on the cover hem section, not back here on the overlock section, but up here in the front, one and three. Then I've got my cover table on. I've got all the settings for the wide cover stitch. My Needles are threaded, my cover looper is threaded, and now it's time for me to attach the knit woven binder. And this is it. Doesn't this look like some sort of Rube Goldberg device? 
Now, do you see the holes right here on the bed of my machine? That's what's gonna attach this binder. And these white screws right here go in those holes. So I'm gonna just put them on loosely. And now you see the, the binder can slide back and forth. Well, what I'm angling for is to get the mouth of this binder right here set so that my binding will go under the foot and be lined up with these two needles. Now, here's a tip that I found. On my machine, I can look right down in here and barely see that crack where the table meets the body of the machine. I can just barely see it. I know that's a good place for my binder. I've also discovered that if I take my ruler and lay it right here, the side of the foot and this little tab on the binder are just about lined up. They're flush. Okay, so I know that's probably a pretty good place, but I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna attach my binder and then I'm gonna test it. All right, so we're gonna take our strip, the one and seven eighths inch by width of fabric strip. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut like a little arrow at the end of my strip. It's gonna make it easier to get through the binder. Like that, like that, like that. And then I'm gonna thread it through what looks like a potato masher here. I'm gonna put it here. Oops, wait, I've already started doing it wrong. Always put your fabric in wrong side facing. There we go. I'm weaving it in and out. And this fabric, this knit, lightweight knit, can get disorganized in a hurry, so you just have to play with it, organize it. All right, now then I'm gonna take the little red screwdriver and that you use to put your needles in and out, and I'm gonna poke that point of that fabric down in this binder and pull it through. Get some slack in it here. I'll put my needle in there and I'm gonna pull it forward. Make sure that my binding stays organized back here, not folded up. I don't want it to fold up. And first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to lay this binding strip up here so that the weight is off of it. I'm just going to lay it over my foot lifter bar there, and I'm going to pull it through. There it comes out. Now that I'm going to take my screwdriver and poke it up in, I call this the mouth of the binder right here. I'm going to poke that fabric up in there, lift the foot up, make sure the needles are all the way up, and then I'm gonna slide that fabric back under the needles and all the way out to the back, back of the foot. Okay, and I'll back here. Pulling it until it's back behind the needles, okay? All right, so I pull the fabric back behind the needles. I'm gonna make sure that it's good and organized back there, but I've still gotta test it because I wanna make sure that those two needles are gonna both rest squarely in the middle of that binding. So I put my foot down. Now, watch my right hand over here. This is really important. Hold your, fa your fabric up, or at the very least, support it somehow, because you will be paying attention <laughs> here. Yeah, there's my friend. You will be paying attention right here and not watching here, and this will get stretched out, and it'll mess up your binding. So make sure this is loose and can feed easily into the binder. All right, I've got my presser foot down, and I'm going to stitch. Now I want to stitch out the back and see if it's organized 
and folding like it should be. I can see a little fold right there, so I'm going to correct that. Yeah. There it goes. Now look right back there. Do you see how pretty that is? It started out a little messy up here, so I kept stitching, and now it's making a beautiful binding right here. That's when I know now it's time to insert my mask body in and attach the binding there. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is stitch binding on the short ends of the mask. You see right there, that's the first thing that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna stick, doesn't matter which side you start with, I'm gonna stick the short end into the mouth of the binder and you just wanna let it kiss. You see how it's just kissed up there. Make sure the foot's down, make sure your binding is supported and loose and start to slowly stitch. Do you see how beautifully it's taking it into the mouth of the binder? Stitch off a little bit, and I'm going to cut it because these cut ends are going to be hidden up inside. See, I can cut it flush with the body of the mask. I'm going to do the same thing here. Cut this flush with the body of the mask. Boom. Take it to the other end and do the exact same thing. Kiss that up into the mouth, and I'm going to be sure that I'm holding up my binding over here so that it doesn't put any um, tightness on it. Here it goes. It's kissing right up into the mouth of the binder. All the way through. It off here. Boom. I want it flush with the edge of the mask body. Okay, now my ends have the binding on them. Now it's time to put the binding on the curved edge. Now here's the trick. We're going to want to leave enough um, to make your loops on your edges. So just pay attention to how I do that. You're gonna stitch on and off, on and off to make your loops. First thing I'm gonna do is stitch out enough binding for about, mm, I wanna stitch out about four inches of just plain binding. Let me measure that. From the needles back, yep, I've got four inches. Now I'm gonna start feeding my mask body. Big tip here, make sure you always have the top of the mask facing up. If you start putting your binding on on this side, then you're gonna have this show on one side and the pretty side on the other. So always have your mask face up. Put it in there, I've got that four inches hanging out the back. And here we go, kissing up to the mouth, making sure that my binding strip is flowing freely. I liken this to kind of patting your head and rubbing your tummy, because you're paying attention to two things at one time. You don't want to lose sight of either one watching it flow in here and I'm keeping this loose. And I'm going slow. Right. Now my mask 
mask is leaving the needles and now I'm just stitching nothing but strap. And what I wanna do is sew out about four and a half to five inches of just strap, nothing else, from the needles back to here. You see where my fingers are? Should be four and a half to five inches of just strap right there. Let's measure it and see where we are. From the needles back, eh, it's four and a half. I'll give it a few more stitches now. Now it's time to bring the other curved edge of the mask around. See how beautifully that stitched that binding on? I'm gonna feed the other side of the curved edge and see how everything is right side up. And I'm gonna kiss that into that mouth of that binder again. Here we go. If I haven't cut anything. Look back there at my loop. Isn't that cool? Pay attention to this strip here. Don't let it get any tightness in it. Okay. body of my mask, but I'm going to keep on stitching. Just strap. Just strap. Keep on going. Keep on going until I have at least four inches of strap coming out. Mm, close. All right. I'm going to cut here. Boom. We're almost done. Look how pretty that is. Now what I'm gonna do is measure the length of this strap here. I'm gonna take my little ruler and it is from here to here. So it's three inches this way, so I know it's three inches this way, so it's a six inch loop right here, right? So down here, I'm gonna measure the same three inches up one side and three inches up the other side. And I'm gonna cut it. Right there. That's where I'm gonna cut both of my pieces. So they'll each be three inches. And then I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. I know this sounds strange, but it really works. I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna butt these edges up right against each other like that. And I'm gonna do a zigzag back and forth, back and forth to close up that edge. Now it's comfortable, it works, it's sturdy. I promise you it will work. Look at my mask here, how I did that. See the zigzag? That's gonna hold, wash, do great, and you don't feel it behind your ear. Okay, that's how you make the mask.